Welcome, and thank you for joining us as we virtually recognize the accomplishments of the top 10% of the class of 2020 and their honored guest. This is one of my favorite evenings of the school year, and though it saddens me that we cannot celebrate together, I am thankful that we can still recognize each student virtually and hear which South Madison staff member they have selected as their honored guest. Before we proceed, I would like to thank the Pendleton Lions Club for providing the top 10% plaques for our students and express to Tri Kappa that what I missed most during this virtual recognition is their scrumptious dinner that they prepare each year that allows us to sit together and rejoice their accomplishments. Thank you both for your continued support over the years. Now let's turn the spotlight where it belongs on our top 10% starting with the student ranked 32nd in the class of 2020. Today I would like to recognize a faculty member that has been a friend and role model throughout my educational career. She's someone I look up to and respect. She's kind, caring, and always willing to help. I believe those traits are some of the most important qualities a teacher can have. She's always asking for advice on how she can improve her lessons and really listens to her students. Way back in Kids Connection, this faculty member always knew how to put a smile on my face. From putting my hair into a messy bun to helping me make mac and cheese in the microwave, she was always my favorite assistant. As I entered my freshman year of high school, I was determined to take a class. This class was always my favorite because it was a lot of fun and we were able to make tons of delicious food. During high school, this teacher encouraged me to join an amazing club called FCCLA, which she helps run at PHHS. This club focuses on giving back to the community. While in FCCLA, I made tons of new friends and became very passionate about the work we accomplished. I even had the honor of being the vice president my junior year and the co-vice president of publicity my senior year. After three years in her foods classes, this teacher came to my culinary arts class with the idea to create our own business that would sell food to the faculty members of the school. With this new business came a lot of learning, learning to keep track of orders and payments and learning to prepare and perfect our own meals. I believe that this class taught me many life lessons that will pay off in the future, like to check the inside of the oven before you turn it on. This faculty member has always been there for me and for that I'm very grateful. I will always remember her as my favorite high school teacher. She taught me to be selfless and how to have fun even at school. The faculty member I have chosen to honor today is Miss Tiffany Owens. Thank you for the unforgettable memories. I will miss you and PHHS greatly. Hello, Mrs. Webster. It's uh, Camden and Tommy. And I know we never had a close relationship outside of class or even in class, but the one thing that drove me to choose you for this letter is that uh, your class is your class format. Your class was the first time I ever had to really take any notes in class or out of class even. And I believe these notes really prepared me for note-taking throughout the rest of high school. This class really forced myself and any other freshman who took AP World to realize that we could not float through school like we did in the past. This realization helped me develop a work ethic inside of school that helped me get into the top 10%. Um, I hope you're doing well and staying safe during all this. Uh, kind regards, Kim, tell me. For me, choosing an honored guest was no easy task. High school hasn't exactly been the smoothest of sailing because life throws a lot your way in those short four years. However, I know I haven't been alone through this journey because I could go on for hours about all the faculty members that have been there at my side. One in particular stands above the rest. To understand who this person is how, and how they've impacted me, we must first go to my sophomore year where the story begins. It is now May of 2018. I am free. I've been liberated from the man that abused me and my closest friends. Despite this liberation, we can't help but feel this deep-seated uncertainty towards our future. Who will lead us now that he's gone? 
Will we find another director in time for the fall season? Will we find one at all? We had so many questions, but we had no answers. Two months later, our answers arrived in the form of my honored guest. My honored guest came to me, to us, on a hot July day. The entire color guard was buzzing with a flurry of emotions. Relief because a director finally arrived, but fear for the unknown. What would he be like? What would he change? Would he stay? Would history just repeat itself? Despite our initial fears, I can confidently say that everyone was ready to turn over a new leaf. We are now back to present day. It's been about two years since our director, our old director left. For two years, we've trained with this man, my honored guest. We have spent hours upon hours in the blistering sun, the pouring rain, and the biting cold. It was all worth it. But why? We were taught to love the art again. Blood, sweat, and tears, both on and off the field, were a small price to pay to learn to perfect our craft, to love each other as a group, and to love the art again. But this isn't a speech dedicated to the Color Guard's achievements. No, this is something more. Something that will definitely stick with us for years to come. Love. We learn to love ourselves. We were shown that we are worth something. We are worth fighting for. We are worth the early mornings and the late nights of the competition days. We were worth a second chance. This man taught me to love something that I, but I thought had been lost to me forever. He taught me that it is okay to fail because I'd always be able to try again. He taught me that my best was good enough. Above, above all else, he taught me to love myself. Thomas Tholley. You came to the Pendleton Heights High School Color Guard in our time of need. I don't think you've ever received the thank you, the, the recognition that you deserve. So now, here I am, recognizing and thanking you for everything that you've done, for your dedication to us both on and off the field. You have and will continue to make a huge difference in the lives of everyone that you work with. If the past few years have any indication of what's to come, then I know that you'll continue to lead this program to do greater things. Thank you for everything that you've done to, done for us, Thomas. Thank you for everything that you've done for me. Thank you. A teacher's job is to teach students the information we need to know. But this teacher goes above and beyond that. Although I've had many great teachers, this one has had a much greater impact on my life. From the first time I met her, she had a smile on her face, and no matter the situation, she continues to wear that contagious smile. I've never met a teacher with such passion to not only teach students, but to teach them about life. Despite not always having the best group of students to work with, I've seen her work relentlessly with these students to encourage and help them along the way. She did whatever was necessary to teach them the lesson so that they were able to understand it in a way that makes sense to them. One of the many times I saw her do this was when she had a new student in her class who barely spoke any English. She found many resources and tools for him so he could not only try to understand the English language, but for him to learn math as well. She went above and beyond to learn simple Spanish phrases and hang signs around the room for him to be able to read. No matter the student or circumstance, she continuously pushes them to do their very best and strive for success. She genuinely is one of the happiest people I have ever met. 
Every time I'm in her classroom, I'm sure to see her smile or hear her funny laugh. She creates strong bonds with her students and gives everyone a friendly face to come to in times of need. Her care for others is an incredible gift that I hope to extend to others as well someday. I always know that if I need something or have something going on, she would be there to help me and give advice. Some of my favorite memories of her is seeing how excited and truly happy she is when students begin to understand the topic or improve their classwork. Her face will light up with joy after hearing how they've gotten a better grade on the next test or even just turned in their homework one of the few times. No matter how little the victory may be, she will make it seem like one of your biggest accomplishments. Ever since sophomore year, I have seen this teacher almost every day at school. And without that relationship, my high school career would not have been complete. I'm so thankful to have had a teacher like you, Mrs. Plovic, and I thank you for the impact that you have made on my life the past four years and will continue to make on others. This teacher has made a huge impact on my life. She's been able to not only watch me, but help me grow all four years of high school. I came to her as this scared, mediocre freshman who was afraid to talk to anyone, and now I'm dance captain, helping lead rehearsals. I love show choir, but it wouldn't be half as enjoyable without this teacher. She makes coming to class the highlight of my day every day, so much so that this year I started and ended each day in her classroom. Some days I think I spent more time with her than with my own mom, with rehearsals, concerts, long Saturday rehearsals, and competitions that would last from 5 in the morning all the way to 2 in the morning the next day. But by spending that much time with her, she's been able to teach me so much. She's taught me to be a leader by giving me the responsibility to help lead 40 kids in a rehearsal and help them get better. She's taught me to put my all into whatever I do, to leave everything on the stage and not hold anything back, no matter how embarrassing my facials might seem. But most importantly, she's taught me to be myself, to come out of my shell and not think so much about what other people might say. She's given me the place to do just that and not be worried about anything else going on outside. One day we did this bonding activity before one of our last competitions. All 40 of us got into this huge circle all the way around the room. She numbered us off into groups, and then when your number's called, you go into the middle of the circle, and you go up to each person individually. You either touch their head, you touch their shoulders, or you touch their face. So if you touch their head, that just means you're good friends. If you touch their shoulders, that means that they've impacted you in a good way. Or if you touch their face, that means that they've changed you for the better. But the catch is, everyone on the outside of the circle has to keep their eyes closed, so you never know who's coming up to you. Let me tell you, I've never cried harder in my entire life. You don't realize how much of an impact you make on people or how much of a role model you are to others until they come up to you and they touch your face and then you just start crying even harder. At the end, this teacher went up to each and every student and touched their face just to show how much every one of us means to her. I would be such a different person today if I'd never joined choir and never met Mrs. Sprouse. She's made me such a better person and really let me be myself in the best way possible. Thanks. I would like to thank Ms. Trout for tutoring me when I was younger. Her tutoring helped me overcome one of the largest difficulties I face daily, dyslexia. Since the state of Indiana did not recognize dyslexia as a learning difficulty, I did not qualify for extra help in school. I found many basic tasks more difficult than they should have been. Reading and writing assignments were particularly difficult for me. Then, Ms. Trout agreed to tutor me using an OG program. Many of the issues I used to face during school have been mitigated because of this tutoring. During our tutoring sessions, we would go through letters and sounds and associate them with items. Ms. Trout taught me about syllable breaks, how to sound out words, and how to memorize red words. And when I completed an important section of this program, she bought me a book to read. I spent an entire weekend reading that book. It was one of the first books that I've ever read on my own 
for fun. Because of Ms. Trout's help, I am in the top 10% of my class, and I have been accepted to two universities, Rose Hallman Institute of Technology and Purdue University. But more importantly, she has instilled a love of reading into me. I am very grateful for Ms. Trout's support and understanding. The help she has provided me has been life-changing, and I am immensely grateful for it. Dad, there are so many small things that you've done for me. You are my first teacher and my biggest fan. There are no words to accurately describe how much you mean to me. I'm beyond thankful that you were the person God decided I needed to be my role model. You make me proud to be every day to be your daughter. You inspire me to be strong, compassionate, and generous. How you treat your students is how every student wishes they could be treated. You provide a safe and comfortable place for them to learn and grow. Thank you for being you, even when life gives you more than you can handle. Besides, being an amazing teacher, you are the best dad any girl could ask for. You mean the world to me, and I am truly going to miss our 6 a.m. chats every morning. I will miss seeing your face every hour of the day. I can't wait to make you proud in college, and I'm excited to pursue science just like you. I love you forever and always. Home looks different to each of us. Sometimes it's a place, sometimes it's a feeling, sometimes it's a person. It's where you can speak your mind and not just be heard, but listened to. It is safety, it is warmth, and it is a refuge. It's where all the people you love gather together. And it often becomes our favorite place. High school, in a word, is about finding your home. Throughout many years of school, I often found myself lost at sea among the churning masses. But my freshman year, when I stepped through the door of the art room, I knew I was home. There at the front was Mr. Hunkler's beaming bright face, brimming with optimism and excitement. The joy that he exuded that day and for many days after is what propelled me through four years of learning to make art and to better navigate the waters of life. No one else I know is, or probably ever will be, as full of enthusiasm for others as Mr. Hunkler is. Every day, he pours his heart into his work, constantly raising us up when we are low, and offering praise when it seems like no one is watching. I was lucky enough to be on the receiving end of many of his invigorating pep talks. No one, and I mean no one, gets me more motivated to create than Mr. Hunkler does. In his class, Failure is just another stepping stone, another part of the process that just has to be developed upon. No one is too far gone, nothing is unsalvageable, and everything has a little bit of good in it. Even outside the creative greenhouse that is his classroom, Mr. Hunkler is just an outstanding friend. I've had the pleasure of being a part of the Muse, Fine Arts Academic Team, and Film Club, all of which he so loyally sponsors year after year. The time he invests into all of us is truly admirable, and that has never been lost on me. The conversations we've shared about art, film, music, horribly embarrassing stories, and most importantly the wild shenanigans he had growing up in the 90s will be among the most treasured memories I have of high school. I've been so enriched and nurtured by my time in his classroom, I know I will carry it with me forever. No amount of fond lamentation could possibly express how much gratitude I have for this incredible teacher that I have been fortunate enough to call my friend all these years. He has taught me by example, as he teaches everyone, how to persist through difficult work, how to take things one day at a time, how to be authentic and full of love for everyone and everything. To be a fraction of who he is would make for a fulfilled, abundant life. Being his student is something I will sorely miss as I graduate this year, but it makes me endlessly happy that hundreds, maybe even thousands of kids will pass through his classes and feel the light that he so openly gives to everyone. So, thank you for lending me your copy of Midnight Madness and I Love Huckabees for a whole summer 
for letting me eat lunch in the art office, for daring me to hiss at my sister that one time, for playing my favorite Radiohead songs in class, and for teaching me the art of throwing down. Thank you, from the deepest, most sincere place in my heart, for being the most radiant, approachable member of my life, in the most fruitful part of my life. Most of all, thanks for being my buddy. During my experience in school over the years, I have had so many teachers who have made an impact on me. I know that learning and everything are important, but one of the highlights of school is definitely connecting with your teachers. The teacher I've chosen to honor has taught me so many things and has shown me how to become a better person. I would like to recognize my art teacher, Mr. Hunkler. Dear Mr. Hunkler, I cannot thank you enough for being my teacher over the years. After just counting, I realized that I had you as a teacher for seven of my eight semesters. You've taught me so many incredible things about art, but what really matters is what you've taught me about life and about myself. You've shown me what it means to be a good person. You treat everyone with patience and you are so encouraging. I loved helping you with Mrs. Babcock's class on Friday. You put so much thought and effort into every single class that you teach. I'm so thankful to have been a part of your first AP art class, and then I'm really sad that we couldn't finish it the way that we intended. But being able to open up to you about how I feel about creativity and just my random thoughts in general means so much. I really learned a lot about my creative process and style from your class. Because of your help, I got into my dream school. I hope to make you proud of my art. Thank you for pushing me and making me create things that are out of my comfort zone. You've been one of my biggest supporters for the years and I really needed that. I know that college is gonna kick my butt next year, but you've definitely helped prepare me for it a lot. I'm gonna miss your various music playlists when I draw though. Thank you for telling me a lot of your different life stories. I hope that all of your college stories and advice will help me out next year. The way that you connect with all of your students is so incredible. You are a great role model and you show people how to be present and to make the most of every day. Thank you for creating art. Thank you for teaching me something new every day. Thank you for showing me what it looks like to be a great leader. Thank you for telling me stories about your friends and your family. Thank you for introducing new artists, movies, and songs to me. Thank you for caring so much about your students, and thank you for showing me what it means to eat art. Because of you, I will try to encourage everyone that I meet. I hope that you can create for your enjoyment more often. I won't forget all of the memories that I made in your class. I have learned after my four years of high school that I truly love getting to know my teachers and forming relationships with them. Most of the time, I enjoy this more than the actual learning in the class as I feel I excel in getting teachers off topic. There is one teacher who gets off topic quite often, but she is also one of the most efficient educators due to her endless homework assignments for muscle memory. This teacher started a Bible study with a few of my friends and me this year just because she purely loves pouring her heart into her students. I truly admire the care she has for others and she inspires me to be better every day. I am so blessed to have had the opportunity to have Senora Williamson not only as my Spanish teacher, but as someone I aspire to be like one day. As I mentioned earlier, Senora has always used muscle memory in her classroom as a way for things to stick in our brains for longer than the 50 minutes in her room. During our Bible study once a week, she began to have us memorize a Bible verse for that week and encourage us to repeat it out loud every day for muscle memory. One week, I was the only one who showed up that morning for Bible study, and Senora thought that I would maybe forget about bringing her five verses that I felt I needed to memorize, as she told us to do the week before. So she picked out some specifically for me. At that moment, I felt so loved that she had spent the time to find verses she felt that I needed to hear. Even during quarantine, I received an encouraging text from her every single day. I can't count the times she has prayed over me and encouraged me to do the same for others. She has helped me grow in my faith before going off to college, and although I will be leaving high school, I know I have a lifelong friend in her, and for that, I am forever grateful. When I think about teachers at Pendleton Heights who have made a significant influence on me over the past four years, I struggle to think of anyone except Mr. Samson Hunkler. I met Mr. Hunkler when I joined the art magazine he runs, The Muse, at the start of my freshman year. I found that he was always super passionate about the club, 
and frequently encouraged its members to be creative and push boundaries in their work. As a writer, I never failed to be inspired by his belief in students' artistic abilities and for his love for art in general. Mr. Hunkler soon became an inspiration within my creative ambitions. I think I have much to owe to him as the writer I am today, and I'm sure many other artists around PHHS would say the same. But beyond being a good teacher, Mr. Hunkler is also just an altogether pleasant guy to be around. I'm going to miss our conversations about movies, hearing interesting stories from his youth, or simply laughing at a stupid joke with him and the rest of the muse at the end of one of our meetings. He knows not just how to teach well, but also how to really connect with his students. So all of this is why I would like to take the time to say a special thank you to Mr. Hunkler. He's been a wise teacher, an inspiration, and above all else, a friend. I hope he never stops teaching and changing the lives of kids at Pendleton Heights. Someone anonymously once said, we all need someone who inspires us to do better than we know how. Many of us have role models in our lives, and to most people, those role models are athletes and movie stars, but to me, a role model is so much more. They help shape someone's personality and characteristics. They are people who someone can look up to for advice in hard situations and know that they will give those words of wisdom. They will never judge our actions and instead only look to help because they really care. A role model is someone who we should never feel awkward talking to about our problems. Sometimes you meet someone that completely changes your life for the better and becomes that role model. It is not very often that students find a teacher that they feel truly connects with and understands them. When I first met James Teeny, I had no idea how much he would impact my life. I honestly just thought I was going to get my Chromebook fixed and that would be it. But soon he had effectively turned his tech area into a space where I felt entirely comfortable to share all of my thoughts, troubles, and just about anything with him. Something that I feel is very rare to find during high school. It was somewhere I could go to play card games during my free periods, rant when my boyfriend was being difficult, or even cry after I failed an, an AP chemistry test. He is always there when I need to ask for advice about anything, and I know that he will tell me the truth even if it is not something that I want to hear, but he will tell me with kindness and without any judgment. So thank you for always being there, Mr. Teeny, especially if it's pausing your day to bring me gas after sliding into a ditch on my way to school. I couldn't have survived high school without you. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well, considering all these terrible things going on out in the world today, but hope you're doing well. So I'll just get started. The beginning of my junior year was an uncertain time for me. It felt like everyone around me had already decided on a college and a career, whereas I had no idea what I was going to do. Then I started to realize that AP Chemistry was quickly becoming my favorite class during the day. Something just clicked for me, and everything in that class became less stressful and more easy and enjoyable. I started to pay more and more attention because the topics became increasingly interesting. Mr. Porter, you were one of the biggest influences in the academic side of my life. Your teaching is what made me want to do more chemistry and get more involved. I always enjoyed the labs that we did, even when I didn't completely understand. Just hearing you explain things once or twice more made all the difference in understanding a topic. I left my junior year with a passion for chemistry and science, thanks to you, Mr. Porter. I started thinking about which teacher I wanted to honor near the beginning of the second semester of my senior, senior year. I wasn't confident with who I was going to pick because I didn't have an overwhelmingly strong connection with any one teacher. I made up my mind during first period, the week that you came back. I liked learning about organic chemistry, but it wasn't until you were teaching me that I really got into it. It became obvious that you should be my pick because you made that class exponentially better. I wish that we got to finish that class because it was my favorite one. So to finish, I just want to th say thank you, Mr. Porter. I hope that you continue to teach for a long time because I know that there will be many more students who appreciate your words just as I have. Thank you. Buenos dias, muchachos. This is a phrase that I heard each and every day I walked into this teacher's classroom. No matter what day it was, no matter if she was having a good or a bad day, this phrase was always a constant. She always would walk into the classroom with a smile on her face, ready to do what she loved most, which is teaching us the Spanish language. And this teacher's classroom is where I found my love for learning Spanish and knew that I wanted to minor in Spanish in college. 
This teacher showed me through her personal experiences how to lo spread love to underdeveloped parts of the world. She has a program where she goes to Ecuador every so often to a region in the Andes mountain range where she brings children boots so they don't have to walk to school barefoot. Hearing about these experiences showed me how to be more of a helpful person and a person who wants to dedicate their life to helping others. Her work on these trips showed me exactly who I want to be in my own life. The combination of service and ministry on these trips makes me hope that one day I'll be able to do all the great things that she has done for others around the world. This teacher is Senora Miller. Thank you, Senora, for everything you've done for me in the year and a half that I had you in class. You have truly been an inspiration and a role model for who I want to be in my own life. I hope to join you in one of your mission trips in the near future. Thank you for everything, Senora. Twenty fourteen, the year of the disappearance of a Malaysian Airlines jet, the year of the spread of the Ebola virus, the year of the rise of ISIS, the year we lost Robin Williams, the year Sony was hacked, the year I, Isabel Taylor, first walked into your classroom, the year my life would be forever changed. If you would have asked my seventh grade self if I would be recognized for being the top ten percent of my class, with absolute confidence I would have said no. I was a loud, hyperactive kid that didn't know when to just sit back and be quiet, and I thrive of getting attention from making an absolute fool of myself. But you, Mrs. Reed, you saw something in me that I wasn't able to see for myself. You saw that I had what it took to be a changing force in this world, and that I was destined to do great things. You helped me realize my passion for math and science, and most importantly, you gave me the knowledge that would be the basis for what has been and will continue to be years and years of the exact same thing. Since my first day of pre-algebra, you have always been a constant, both inside and outside the classroom. Whether it be learning about arithmetic equations or seeing you every single year when I go down to cut my Christmas tree, you've always been there. You taught me how to be truly successful in this world and how to deal with failures and mistakes, because Lord knows how many of those I've made. And I appreciate that greatly. In closing, I would like to take a moment to talk about math. Now, there are many theories in math that I find particularly fascinating However, I will only bore you with the basics of one theory, and that is the theory of general relativity. Formulated in 1915 by Albert Einstein, the theory of relativity is a complex one, however it can be understood by one equation. It is truly amazing that the theory by which scientists came to understand what gravity and time space was all about can be understood by one singular mathematical equation. I think a lot of connections can be made between you and this magical equation, in the sense that every characteristic you could picture the perfect mentor, teacher, and woman having are encapsulated by you, Mrs. Reed. In just seventh grade, I was given a foundation that I would set the rest of my life upon, all because of you. You taught me to put myself in Barbie shoes, take a leap of faith, and just hope that I have the right amount of rubber bands to catch my fall. And I cannot thank you enough. <laughs> Hello, honored guest. If you're seeing this, either the banquet has been canceled, which, obviously, the coronavirus, or I did not attend the banquet, potentially, because my family is simply not in a position where I can take that risk and feel good about it, personally. Regardless, that's how things are. On to the letter. That's enough rambling. In my freshman year, I was a much more mundane person. I didn't really like experimenting because I was content being a normal person. However, my honored guest, though it was indirect, changed me for what I view as for the better. She played a pivotal role in getting me to be more outward eventually leading to me being the person I am today. I was a slight recluse, and was cynical. I still am both, being completely honest, but besides the point. Without a few crucial moments, which I will be going into detail, I had with her, I would not have accomplished what I have accomplished at this point. Freshman year, to some, is a year to stay receded in safety, adjusting to the standards of the new high school environment. For others, it provides an opportunity to change as the routine around you 
also morphs into a new form. I was in the former. I wanted to have a rather typical high school experience. Get in, get my diploma, get out. That was it. However, the opportunity to experiment came when I was scheduling classes for the second semester. I had a gap that I needed to fill, and I had already taken a study hall. When I asked her for help, she pointed me to the radio classes because I was doing decently in English. And scripting things for radio tends to require a decent grasp of the English language. I took those introductory classes, and while I didn't really move on into radio proper, I did end up being more open to new things in the future. Which leads me into my next point. I write as a hobby. You may have read some of my writings in the Muse, and if you have, you have your own opinion of them. Personally, I don't think the ending to Dream World was all that good. However, I wasn't always so open to getting my work out in the open for others to read. Usually, my writings of 2B stories were comprised of a single chapter that I'd show off to my friends, and... Well, they didn't get much exposure outside of that. I was curious as to whether or not my writing actually held up outside of a group of friends. Because, you know, they tend to play down bad parts. They don't want to hurt your feelings. So, I showed her the first two chapters of Dreamworld. A short story, which eventually found itself published in the Muse, as indicated by my earlier con comment. Her encouragement of my work, genuine or not, led me to think about joining the Muse, which, alongside statements about the Muse from a friend, made me the person I am today after I joined it. My honored guest had taken me from a recluse to an introvert who likes to get out to sometimes, which meant I socialized from somewhere else besides a computer screen. And so, for her actions informing who I am today, even if she believed her actions were minor and inconsequential, I thank Laura Stevens, my pre-AP English 9 teacher, for effectively pulling me out of my box. I hope you're doing well in this time of epidemic. school, everyone needs to have someone on their side to stand up for them and support them. Luckily, I have had many people support me throughout high school. Today, I want to recognize one special person. This teacher has been with, with me through thick and thin. I have many memories of the conversations and times we have spent together. This person is truly my mentor, inspiration, and friend. As a mentor, this teacher always encouraged me to work hard and do my best. She had high expectations for the work I helped her complete, and there were certain jobs she saved just for me. Through her example, I realized that hard work and dedication will lead to success. She also has great patience and likes to help people succeed. I remember moments when she would help me find quality resources for my assignments. I am very thankful for all the times she has encouraged me and helped me throughout my four years of high school. This individual, has also been an inspiration to me. As a beta sponsor, she taught me to care about my community and my school. I remember many projects where items were collected and donated to local charities. Her inspiration has also led me to be a part of a group that packs food boxes for needy teens. In addition, she inspired me to host a German girl last fall. We not only had a wonderful time, but also have, had, have become great friends through that experience. Lastly, she inspired me to take a trip to Germany. She has even helped me plan the itinerary. Unfortunately, this trip has been postponed until next summer, but I'm still looking forward to visiting her favorite places in Germany. Finally, I consider this person a friend. She has always taken time to listen to me and encourage me through tough times. I always knew she cared about me and wanted what was best for me. Holidays were fun because she would bring in refreshments to celebrate. She even made me a special treat on my birthday. 
It is with extreme gratitude that I want to thank Mrs. Moore for being my mentor, inspiration, and friend. I will forever be thankful for all you have done for me. Today I will be honoring Mr. Robert Porter. I met you during my sophomore year, and at that point I didn't know how much you were going to mean to me. I never really want to talk about my problems, which makes it difficult to reach me when I'm having a rough time. Even though I never really expressed what was going on in my mind, you have always found a way to make me feel better. You've always told me that my well-being came before school work, and you were always someone I can go to if I needed something or I just wanted to talk. I really appreciate that you gave me a safe place and somewhere to escape to. You're one of the most kind people that I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. You put everyone before yourself and you look out for those around you. I remember you telling me that if I needed your help, that I could call you and you'd be right there. You are kind and understanding, strong and fearless, and compassionate and driven. I've never seen someone who loves their job so much. No matter how many times I struggled with chemistry, you have always helped me work through it. You are the one who helped me figure out that I want to major in chemistry. You have given me so many opportunities to do work in the lab by setting up stations, mixing chemicals, and learning about the equipment that's used. I was so scared when you had your surgery. I have family who have cancer and sadly they didn't make it through. The thought of losing you was incomprehensible. You have made such a large impact on my life and you probably don't even know it. You've been there through my worst and my best times. It made my day spending time with you every morning and I enjoyed all the little funny moments. And yes, as you pointed out, you've had one of the rarest forms of cancer more times than the Cubs have won the World Series. I'm sad that I don't get to spend the rest of my senior year with you. I might not even get to say bye or give you a hug. Either way, I'd like to say thank you for the time that you spent with me, dealing with my sass and my smart Alec remarks, and for being my school dad. You are a miraculous person with great courage and a heart of gold. The world needs more people like you. I love you, Rob, and I hope that I see you soon. In a subject that most people would find boring, Mr. Thomas has figured out how to teach the material in an interesting way. He makes up hilarious stories and does imitations that are right on the money. His notes are fairly unconventional, but their humor makes the information easier to retain. His unique teaching style is what makes his class so awesome. For the first time ever, I feel like I actually know something about politics. He is also one of the first teachers I've had who truly tries to treat us like the young adults we are. If someone has input, he allows them to just shout it out. If they want to argue test points, he usually lets them. He encourages discussion, but doesn't force his opinion in any way. In fact, he tries to keep it a secret. One of his favorite phrases is, I see all sides quickly. Thanks to his class, I had something to look forward to every day, no matter how I was feeling. He taught me that you can truly do what you love, and because of that, I feel better about the major I picked for college. I don't know exactly what the future holds for me, but I know now how to make the best of every situation. That is, as long as I don't end up a potato farmer in Idaho. Mr. Thomas, so I won't miss you calling me a terrible assistant or throwing my tests back at me. I'll definitely miss your outdated references and brightly colored socks. Thank you for taking a dull class and making it one of the most interesting and engaging ones out there. And seeing as we missed out on the last quarter of our year, keep an eye out for myself and the other members of cabinet. We plan on visiting. You can't get rid of us that easily. My hair's a mess and I'm turning this in late. It's kind of like high school. So, this goes out to a woman who over the past four years has made me a better person and a better man. Let's first hit on her room. It was a nice room. She'd always keep the lights low, have soft music playing, had comfy chairs, and it was just a nice place to relax, take a load off. It was also a good way to plan your day because it was right in the middle of my day. I would always plan what I was doing before her period and after her period. Usually what we'd be doing in her class would be uh, just helping her, being her assistants, or what I would be doing would be doing my calculus homework that was due next period because I forgot about it. Sorry, Miss Dunn. But more about the woman. Um, she was very nice, subpar euchre player, I'd say. You know, she got lucky a few times. But a very caring woman who would always laugh at your jokes 
and you could tell that if you get on her bad side, she would use her mom voice and you would like straighten up, you know, sit straight up and you wouldn't make a noise for the rest of her period. So this goes out to Miss Kane. Thank you for being the best non-teacher teacher I've ever had. And even though you taught no subject, I learned with you every day. Dear Mr. Hinton, I've never been a huge fan of math, and it was definitely my worst subject all through middle school and high school. I always dreaded going to math class, but things started to change my junior year, and especially my senior year, when I had my favorite teacher I've ever had. Although I still wasn't great at math, you made it fun. I love listening to your stories and just being goofy in your class. AP Statistics was my favorite class this year, and I'm so glad I decided to take it. I looked forward to it every day. Although you would get a little frustrated with me because senioritis hit me hard, our seven student class was the best. The class was always so supportive of each other and you definitely taught us that. Although we did plot against you sometimes to get a curve on a quiz or work together on some tests, helped us come together and we always wanted to see the other members of AP Stat succeed. I am lucky that you put up with me and Trey, especially since we give you a handful sometimes. Tea time always made my day so much better, even though I'm not even a huge fan of tea. I just liked that a teacher cared enough to allow us to use their own materials they brought from home. You also supplied us with healthy snacks like Fig Newtons, and you were always honest with us about anything we asked. I also loved waving to you in the hallway because you always had a smile on your face and you were happy to see me. You would always listen to my weird stories and dreams and then tell us the best stories about your traveling days. And on days when the class was feeling really down or stressed out, we got connect the dots to boost our moods. I also really appreciate it when you would take your time to go over something that we didn't understand instead of just moving on. You have truly had a positive impact on my life and I am a better person because of you and your classes. You have taught me to be more patient and kind even on my worst days. I definitely will be visiting soon. Thank you for all that you've done for me over the past few years and making me look forward to math class, something no one has ever done before. I will never forget the many memories I made in that classroom and I'm excited to see you again someday. Sincerely, your favorite student, Jillian Yautzi. All the rumors or pre-assumptions you hear about this teacher prior to having her are completely and utterly wrong. Prior to having this teacher, I thought she would be the scariest person I've ever encountered. Boy, was I wrong. After having this teacher for about two days in the first semester, I realized what a blessing it was to be taught by her. Though her criteria was mainly to teach the meaning of different literatures, she taught so much more than that. This teacher taught us what it is to be strong in the toughest of times. She taught us how to make the most out of each and every day, and most importantly, she taught us how important it is to be kind to others. I had the opportunity to have this teacher not only once for one class in the first semester, but for two other classes in the second semester. Having this teacher for three different classes, I got to see her teaching method in several different ways, and I got to hear a lot of different stories, some of them more than once. This teacher is the best at getting along with all the different personalities that her students have to offer. She knows how to joke with us and how to make us listen. She knows when we have so much on our plates already and need a day off or a due date pushed back. And she knows how to show the importance of us to her. She shows how important we are to her in many different ways, whether that's walking with us in the hall, saying hi in the morning when we're walking to our lockers, or verbally telling us that she gets up each and every day and does this because she genuinely wants to. There's a reason this teacher teaches primarily seniors. She knows how to connect with us, and she becomes one of the most important teachers in our lives just within our last year. As much as missing our last nine weeks is killing all of the seniors, we know she hurts just as much. We know she would much rather be sitting on her stool behind her podium or finding an empty desk in the classroom and sitting with us. We know she would much rather be teaching us in person. In fact, she is one of those teachers that would brave the coronavirus just to be with us again. And as important as we are to her, I hope she knows that she is just as important to us. She is the light of the day, even when she's in a bad mood or is tired that day. And she is allowed to be tired since she does get up before the sun does every day. She is one of the most amazing women I've ever met and deserves the world. If you've ever had this teacher, you've probably guessed by now that it's Miss Gray. Miss Gray, you are the biggest blessing of my senior year, and I can't believe I don't get to finish it with you. 
but trust me, our class will find a way to walk across that stage, and I will shake your hand and recite Shakespeare's birth and death date for you. And what you've taught me will live on within me forever. Hi everybody, my name is Avery Landman and this is my honored guest letter. For the person I'm honoring today, I do not think of them as just one of my teachers, but also as one of my friends. She never fails to put a smile on my face and even though I was only able to have this teacher for not even a full school year, I've become closer to her in other ways. I started growing closest with this teacher during volleyball season. I volunteered to work at the score table during the JV games and she did the book at every single home game. Sitting with this teacher and Mr. Hunkler during the games was definitely never boring. From afar, it might look like the scores table was completely focused on their jobs at hand and never talked about anything besides the game. But in reality, the topics ranged from talking about the Vietnam War to talking about my boyfriend who was sitting in the stands across from us. No matter how many times I had, I had to change into my smelly knee pads and ankle braces right next to her, never did she complain about the smell, even though I know she had to have smelled them. She always let me borrow her pens because I never had one, and I confided in this teacher quite a lot too. I would talk to her about things I was worried about or upset about, and she never failed to make me laugh or make me feel better. If I ever seemed sad in class, she always made sure I was okay and always asked how I was doing. This teacher pulled me out of the hallway my junior year and explained the reason I wasn't accepted into National Honor Society was because I didn't brag about myself enough. And as I teared up because I was so upset with myself, she told me that there was always next year and to not beat myself up about it. She barely even knew me then. I have never met another human being like this woman, which makes sense because she claims she is actually just a cat in a human body. From a student point of view, she made me enjoy writers such as Shakespeare and Ibsen, showing me that there is always more to a story than what it seems. And I think that is true for life overall. There is so much more to this person than might be able to be seen by the naked eye, but I am so thankful I have gotten to know her. My honored guest is Mrs. Loretta Gray, the most unpredictable but amazing woman I have ever met. Thank you, Mrs. Gray, for impacting my life greater than you know. Even though you may not realize it, you opened my eyes to seeing the most wonderful parts of this world we live in. You have shown me how to find laughter in the saddest of times, and you have taught me how to open my heart to all the people I meet, because that is what you did for me. I will never forget you grabbing my hands and cheering with me after we finally beat Noblesville's team after losing to them for three years in a row. Just before the game, I had been telling you about how one of their players used to bully me in previous years, and the amount of excitement you had for me after we beat that girl's team will never leave my mind. I wish the amount of time I had in your elaborately decorated classroom was longer, but I will forever cherish the time that I did have. You always taught me to never use the word hate, so out of respect of that, Mrs. Gray, I strongly dislike the fact that I will never get to do another question of the day while sitting in my seat by the windows, but thank you for absolutely everything. Thank you for being a huge role model and inspiration to me, and thank you for being a friend. And lastly, if you ever want to come over for, for potato soup night, let me know and you are welcome. I know how much you love it. Thank you. Hello students and staff of Pendleton Heights. I would like to thank everyone for giving us the opportunity to make these videos under the unfortunate circumstances that we are in as of right now. In addition to this, I'd like to show my appreciation to all of the teachers I have crossed paths with throughout my educational journey. Each and every one of you has shaped my path here, and I am extremely grateful for my experiences with each and every one of you. I will carry a lesson from each of you as I pursue higher education. Among all of the incredible people I was surrounded with at Pendleton Heights, one classroom stands out to me in several different ways. For one, I spent a large amount of time in this room. Across all four years of my high school education, an hour of the day for six semesters was dedicated to my learning in there. Secondly, I was always captivated by things being taught there. It made no difference to me if it was a note-taking day or if there was a hands-on activity. There was always something new to be learned. Lastly, I have so many great memories of my experience inside and out of the classroom. Take, for example, the end of the year project. Normally, this is a point of a large amount of stress for students. Don't get me wrong, it still took a lot of preparation, but the difference here was that you got the feeling that you were just as prepared, for better or for worse, as your classmates. No matter how doubtful you were of your physics week project, there was someone in your class who was in the same boat. Knowing that took a large amount of the pressure off and it let you laugh at yourself too. We also had some laughs outside of the classroom. The first thing that comes to mind is learning about the gas laws with the giant weather balloon. 
Those of you in this class will definitely remember this day, especially Isabel Taylor, who I'm sure will never forget it. There are so many great memories from my time in Mr. Elrod's classroom, and I will always be grateful for what he has taught me. I'm not sure whether future physics classes will measure up to the time I spent with Mr. Elrod, but because of Mr. Elrod, I feel prepared to face the challenges that college will throw my way. Thank you, Mr. Elrod, for introducing me to physics and being a great mentor. I have been in Frau Osborne's class since my sophomore year. Frau takes all these years she spends teaching her students German and uses them to really get to know and care for her students, all of them. If a student somehow made it all the way to German 5 without being able to say, my name is Auf Deutsch, Frau would still ask them how their day has been and genuinely care about the answer. If a student just never showed up to class and used all of their nine absences in the first two weeks, Frau would still worry every single time that student wasn't in class and ask the student's friends to make sure they're okay. If a student hardly ever spoke in class and did the bare minimum, Frau would still be able to tell if that student was upset or not feeling well and give them the time and space they need. Frau cares so much about all her students and her students can tell. We are all so lucky not only to have an amazing German speaker, but also an amazing person to look up to during our years in German. Frau Osborne talks with her German students every day to stay updated on their lives and to get to know them better. Yet through this, I have never once felt like my education was being put on pause for the sake of conversation. In fact, I know that my German skills are better for it because almost all of this conversation is in German. Frau has given her students the tools that we need to truly be able to communicate within the German language. Along with Frau Claxon, Frau Osborne has completely changed the way students learn German at Pendleton Heights. Most teachers who have been teaching for as long as Frau Osborne has would never have done this because the way it is now is fine. And I've been in other foreign language classes. It is fine. But the thing is, Frau Osborne doesn't want just fine for her students. She wants the very best, and she's willing to work to give them that. Frau cares about what she teaches and who she teaches, and she puts in so much work to make sure her students get the most out of what she teaches as we can. I am so grateful for all the care and hard work that Frau has put into me and my German education. She has impacted my life in so many ways, and I know that her influence will continue to affect my life in ways I do not yet know. In college, I plan on majoring in international studies, but this wasn't always the case. Frau never pushed any of her students into a German-related field, but what she did instead was give all of us the tools and opportunities to succeed in one if we wanted to. Being in her class helped to show me what I am truly passionate about and helped me stop from going down a career path I know I would have been unhappy in. I have tried to express how appreciative I am that Frau has been my teacher for these many years, but I do not think anything I could say would could really show how grateful and lucky I feel. So if anything, let me say this. Danke schön, Frau. Your all is. Dear honored guest, hallo, ich heiße Connor oder Simone in Deutschklasse und ich bin ein Senior bei Pendleton Heights High School. Ich habe vielen Dank für alle meine Lehrer und Lehrerinnen, aber eins sind sehr besonderes zu mir. For the past two years, I have been lucky enough to have been able to experience the fantastic teaching in German class from Frau Osborne. Many people ask me why I chose to even take German in the first place, and I've always answered that it comes easier to me than some of the other languages like French or Spanish. But after five years of taking German, and three of those being under Frau Osborne, I can really pinpoint her as the cornerstone of my success when it comes to learning the language with such ease. Having spent, year, spent years speaking and learning German herself, on top of living in Germany for a bit, 
Frau excels in providing us with terrific knowledge and stories that would make any student believe she is a natural born German speaker. Building off of her exceptional educational pedigree, Frau Osborne has created a wonderful setting for her classroom. In my eyes, a good teacher knows the content well and shares it adequately. On the other hand, a great teacher is able to still efficiently teach while also being able to engage his or her students with the knowledge in a fun way that really resonates with each student. And there is no better representation of a great teacher than Frau Osborne. The atmosphere from her classroom was always very fun and welcoming. When a question or a conflict with anything, whether German related or not, arise, Frau would always be willing to help. While speaking German with us, she would always ask questions about our jobs, athletics, personal lives, you know, weekend plans, and much more, allowing for a great personal bond from each student to be formed. Frau was even generous enough to spend some of her own free time writing recommendation letters for college and scholarships on my behalf. Furthermore, with the usage of interactive games and conversations that included the German curriculum, we were able to still enjoy joking around and having fun with one another. Personally, German class was a nice break in the middle of my day to not have to worry about homework or tests. Rather, I could sit back and go enjoy a humorous game or conversation in class, but still learn. Even during the e-learning, Frau is quick to respond with emails and prepares a short video explaining the plans for us each week, just showing her care for the success of her students. So Frau Karen Osborne, I cannot thank you enough for the tremendous effort and energy you have put into teaching me for the past three years. From traveling all the way from Zionsville each morning in our unpredictable Indiana weather, to dealing with the unexpected health con issues concerning your husband, you have always still held that same positive attitude that radiates in your classroom. So, as I leave Pendleton Heights High School and might not be able to remember specific German words in decades time, I will always be able to remember the real joy from your classroom and your lasting impact on me as not only a student, but as a person as well. Danke Frau. Sincerely, Connor Simone Hendrickson. Good evening, everyone. I'm so thankful and blessed to be here tonight. For accomplishing this achievement, I have to give thanks to everyone that helped me along the way. So I would like to thank all my teachers who helped me to get this far. However, there was one person in particular that I consider myself lucky to have had the opportunity from which to learn. This teacher has had such an impact on me from the first time I had them in second semester sophomore year. She has an amazing sense of humor, but when it came time to start learning, she gave us the knowledge we needed to succeed. This teacher was also an inspiration outside the classroom. She has traveled, many, traveled to many countries to help those who are not as fortunate as us. For example, she helped children in Colombia by providing shoes to kids who have to walk miles every day just to get to school. These children are oftentimes in desperate need of new shoes just from the fact that the soles of the shoes are completely gone, and a lot of them don't even have shoes. About a year ago, our class learned that she would be retiring and would not return to teach us for our senior year. I think I can speak for everyone in saying that we were all less than thrilled. However, we were fortunate to have one last month with this teacher this year as a temporary substitute before spring break. For that, I'm very grateful. She has an amazing per she's an amazing person that has, had that has made me a better person as a whole. She has not only taught me Spanish, but also the values of respect, honesty, and so much more. I know a lot of people here probably will not understand this, but gracias, Senora Miller, para las risas y las memorias. Yo recordaré usted en mi corazón para siempre. Thanks to Senora Miller, I plan to further my Spanish education at the collegiate level. I know that she will keep impacting those around her just as she did for me. Thank you, Senora Miller, for all that you have done and all that you will do. This teacher is the person that helped me understand my passion for helping others. She has given me advice countless times, whether it be about my career, education, friends, or faith. Her many words of wisdom have gotten me through many tough days at school, and I'm so thankful that she always has snacks in her drawers. I joke with my friends that I want to be her when I grow up. All joking aside though, she is a perfect role model of the woman I want to become. She is welcoming, loving, confident, and compassionate. Junior year in her AP class, all of her students created a bag with their name on it. Then we were encouraged to write notes to, each other, to other students and sneak them into each other's bags. I hope she knows the impact these notes had on her students. I still have all of my notes, including the one she wrote me. 
She inspires me to be confident in who I am and pursue the things I love with passion. Her love for her students is evident in the way she teaches. If I could have taken her class every single year, I would have, and I do not like writing. Her class is always the highlight of my day, and I know many other students feel the same. I am so incredibly thankful to have this woman as a class sponsor. Thank you, Mrs. Gordon, for everything you have done for me, your students, and the class of 2020. Hi, welcome to Subway. How are you doing today? I've uttered this phrase thousands of times. 99% of the time, the response is a simple, I'm doing well, how are you? Or something like that, and nothing more. Only a select few people respond in a more unconventional way. Only a very select few people care to learn more about the person behind crafting their lunch or dinner, even the people I know personally. This type of response takes an extremely special and kind-hearted individual with an invested effort to make people feel appreciated. The person I'm talking about would oftentimes venture into Subway and ask about me and all my friends that I had way back when she was my teacher in elementary school. These frequented trips to Subway really made me look back and appreciate what this person has done for the rest of my classmates and I, and I could not think of a better person to honor as being the most influential person on my academic, academic journey to the top 10% of my class. This person gave the rest of my classmates and I a dominating head start over the rest of our class in terms of academics. With 11 out of 13 students that still attend our school from our third and fourth grade class in the top 10% and six out of the top 10, I think it's safe to say that this person did an amazing job at what they did. Elementary education is such an important and underappreciated step in an academic journey that often gets overlooked, but I can assure you that without this teacher, I would not be the same student or person that I am today. If we never learned about what fractions were, how could I possibly do my AP Calculus homework? If we never learned about grammar and proper sentence structure, how could I be writing this letter? As we move on to the next stage of our life, wherever that may be, we cannot forget where we came from, that little secluded classroom at the end of the third grade hall. On behalf of the entire third and fourth grade class from 2010 to 2011, we thank you. We thank you for teaching us the greatest ending to the happy birthday song ever. We thank you for teaching us that reading folders are red, Writing folders are yellow, math folders are orange, social studies folders are blue, and science folders are green. And most of all, we thank you for being such a great role model and key contributor to our success in high school. I'm proud to announce that my honored guest is Mrs. Diana Downey. Sincerely, the greatest sandwich artist in the world, Kai Moore. Hi, I would just like to start off by saying how incredibly thankful I am to have been blessed with so many amazing teachers throughout my 13 years of education. Not only have they taught me about academics, but also about myself, about themselves, and just about life in general. I would not be the person I am today without the impact each and every one of my teachers has left on me. So tonight, I would like to take the opportunity to honor one of these teachers. Dear Mrs. Gordon, I still remember the first time I met you. It was the beginning of freshman year and we had a meeting with the whole class in the auditorium. At the end, the officers were supposed to go up to meet our class sponsors. We shyly introduced ourselves, nervous for what the year entailed, nervous for all the new responsibilities being a freshman meant, and nervous for where these next four years may take us. Little did I know that this moment would be the beginning of a relationship I'll never forget with someone who took these nerves away and guided me along every step of the whole journey. At the time, I was just an ambitious baby freshman trying to find my place in the world. I remember always peeking my head into your classroom, which was decorated super cute, by the way, to see if you were there so I could bother you with another question or random idea I had. Throughout my first two years, this was the routine. We began to get to know each other pretty well, finding out we actually had a lot in common. I remember the day we talked for so long about show choir and dance and theater and how much you loved it all in high school. And I immediately knew that we were going to have a special type of bond more than just a teacher could give me. We went to countless float buildings where we would always have a good time listening to some good music and running around with the girls. You were always there, supporting me no matter what it was, and I'm so thankful for that. I would have to say that junior year was where it all hit, though. You made this such a special year for me. You were finally my actual teacher, so I got to have your class every day. To be honest, I don't know where to start with this part. I guess I'll just start with the basics, the academics. Being in your AP English class taught me how to be a stronger writer overall. 
You taught us how to really write from the heart and put our personality on a page. And I'm grateful you've given me the ability to grow in this way. You taught us what we needed to know, but in a way that made it fun and exciting to learn. But Mrs. Gordon, it's so much more than that. It's so much more than words on a page. It's so much more than 50 minutes sitting in class each day. It's so much more than reading a work and knowing how to analyze it. It's everything in between that has helped to make me who I am. Your constant ear to my rants, shoulders to cry on, hand to hold, and heart to love are things that helped me get through arguably the hardest year of high school. You always knew just what to say and exactly what I needed to hear when I needed to hear it. Your positivity and radiance, no matter what may be going on, showed me how to persevere. The way you always put 110% of your effort into whatever you were working on, inside or outside of school, instilled in me that anything you set your mind to was possible. You showed me what it means to truly be a strong-willed woman. The compassion you show towards every single one of your students taught me the importance of reaching out and caring for my peers. You never gave up on me, and you always encouraged me to keep pushing until I reached my goals because it would be worth it in the end. It didn't stop there as all of this translated over to my senior year as life got more serious and real and I could put these lessons into use. I miss spending countless days talking about prom during class. Sorry for not paying attention sometimes. And hope we get one last go around together. I don't know how I would have figured out the guide to surviving high school without you. So thank you for being such a significant mentor to me. Thank you for everything that you've done to help me grow as a student and a person. Thank you for supporting me always, whether it be by coming to all required performances or just giving me life advice. Thank you for always sticking by my side and being such a fantabulous role model. I truly appreciate the way you have impacted me and I know freshman me would say the same thing. If only she knew how much you would come to mean from the first time I met you to the end of my senior year. Sincerely, Emma Caldwell. Mr. Porter, in this, I hope to express my gratitude for you as a teacher and as a person and for your class. It was clear to me that my criteria for an awesome classroom experience was far surpassed in AP Chemistry during my junior year. From the ion test to the final experiment, I was never not excited to get to class. I can't imagine having a high school experience without having this class with you as a teacher. So to that, I say thank you. Thank you for also caring deeply about us as students and young adults. For me personally, I always valued the way that you treated us 17 year olds with respect, even if some of us didn't deserve it. I also appreciated the times of getting off topic and discussing deep thinking, introspective questions that you inevitably had well versed answers for. Thank you for reminding me that I do, I do not know everything about everything and that my violent oppositions to mastering chemistry were more than likely flawed. I felt for you in your tough days, but I always felt like even in the worst of times, you would help others in any way that you could. Above all else, I will enjoy the unending sarcasm and wit that you carry with you. So please do not ever quit giving students the uncomfortable blank look that somehow forces them to want to find the answer themselves and learn more. Thank you most of all for being an encouragement to the education and life of students such as myself. Sincerely, Austin Davis, and P.S. Mastering Chemistry is always wrong. Throughout high school, I've dealt with many changes. I've had many different teachers. I've watched as many of my friends have graduated and gone off to college. I've even changed myself. But through all four years and through all of the change, I've had one person who has always been there for me. This person has consistently gone above and beyond to help me, whatever my needs may have been. She has printed a countless number of papers for me, often on short notice, and has even helped me to come up with topics for speeches. Her willingness to always take the time to assist me has helped to ensure that these past four years have never gotten too stressful for me. On top of everything that she has done to help me, she has also done something that has had a much bigger impact on me. She, she has shown me every day by example how to live life with the right perspective. She has shown me that every interaction is a chance to help make someone's day. She has shown me that even if you're dealing with an overload of work or have been having a tough day, 
you can still look for the positives and focus on those. Her regular reminders to not work too hard have helped remind me to step back and enjoy life instead of constantly worrying about what needs to be done next. Her mentality has helped to teach me that the only thing worth worrying about is how to make the rest of today the best that it can be. While I'm sad that the coronavirus has prevented me from seeing this person since before spring break, I am happy in knowing everything that she has taught me and everything that she has done for me. I will do my best to follow this person's reminders to not work too hard, to remember the way that she has always been there for me, and most importantly, to remember how she has shown me to live life with the right perspective. This person has last left an impact on me that will last a lifetime. This person is Mrs. Frakes. I'm honored to work in a district with such thoughtful and brilliant students, as well as in a district where each year the top 10% expresses how difficult it is to only select one teacher at the end of the 13 years. For those of you that were selected as a 2020 honored guest, congratulations. I believe the competition is stiff and is worthy of attention. And to the top 10%, well done. I know you have had many late nights and stressful moments to be amongst this class's top 10%. Let it be known that your accomplishments are no less than those that have gone before you, and even if we had to recognize you virtually, your hard work has not gone unnoticed. Thank you for all you've done for Pendleton Heights High School and your community. Chin up and let's celebrate. Thank you to the top 10% for the gratitude you have shown in this presentation and many thanks to your parents and guardians for the beautiful gift that they have shared with the world. May you always be kind and help where you can and when you see someone in need. Thank you, stay safe, and stay healthy.